Welcome to part six of our errors in programming series and today we're going to be looking at checking multiple criteria. In the previous video we explained how the flagging and counting techniques worked and in this video we're going to look at examples of those techniques. So let's get into it. We're going to have two buttons. One's going to demonstrate the flagging technique and one the counting technique. So let's have a look. So on this button I've just got two criteria in this case. One is that we are taking in a hexadecimal code um, and the criteria that we have been specified is that there must be four characters long and it must only contain hexadecimal digits like 0 to 9 and A to F for those of you who have forgotten what hexadecimal is from grade 10. So we want to check that both those criteria are true and in order to do that there's a bit of programming particularly for criteria 2 that needs to happen before we can even um, do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the flagging technique and if you remember the flagging technique we're going to create a boolean variable which I'm going to call b flag of type boolean it's quite a scary variable because of the boo so we're going to create a boolean variable and we are going to initialize that B flag to true. We're going to assume, hey, we're going to assume that that code is actually legit and that it's all correct as far as the criteria. But just in case, we're going to check all the times when it's not following that criteria. So the first criteria is quite easy. It must be four characters long. So we want to check the opposite of that. So we want to say if the length of S code, we've already done the input there. If the length of S code is not equal to 4, then that is a problem. Then I'm going to say, hey, B flag is equal to false. So we found a, a, a type of criteria when it's not valid, when it fails that criteria. And then we reset it back. Hey, there's a problem here. Set that assumption back to false. There's no else B flag equals to true part. You don't do that because if, if, if you put an else B flag equals to true here, then what would happen is as long as the last criteria is true, even if it fails every other criteria, it will still be true, which is not what we want. We want to meet all the criteria. Okay, so we've assumed that it's true. Check the first criteria. Now the second criteria, checking that it's only digits from 0 to 9 and A to F. That's a little bit more tricky because we've literally got to go through each and every um, character and like, hey, is this a 0 to 9, A to F? So there's actually technically... Um, five criteria. It's one for that and then one for each of the letters if there's only four letters. So those are things that we've um, got to be careful of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a for loop and I'm going to check. So I'm going to get an integer value. So let's get an integer, an R type integer. And we're going to use a for loop. For R equals one to the length. We could technically say till four because we are assuming that it is four. Um, because it, if it's not 4, then obviously it will fail on that count. But uh, 1 to the length of code do, and we're going to say, okay, so what are we doing here? We want to check if each letter, and to access each letter, we say S code square bracket R. If you remember from your string handling days, that's how I access each individual. I want to check if each letter is a 0 to 9, A to F. So I want to check if that's 0 to 9, A to F. So... Um, what I normally do is I use a, I check it based on a, I'm going to call it a hex, op, hex string. And in this hex string, right at the top, I'm going to put in all the possible um, characters that I will allow. So I'm allowed a 0 to 9 and I'm allowed an A, B, C, D, E, F. Those are all the characters that I want. And I'm going to check the position of the 4 of because R is going to be a 1 the very first time. So S code 1. Check the position of 4 in there. Is it there? Yes, it is. It'll be at position 5 in this case. So it is there. And if it is there, then I know that it's a valid hexadecimal code. If, for example, the first character was a question mark, then the position of the question mark in there would be 0. It wouldn't be there. But if you remember, when I'm using the flagging technique, I'm checking for when it's invalid. I'm checking for when it fails. So I don't want to check if this character is in hex code. I want to check when it's not there. In other words, I want to check if the position of this letter in the hex code, if that is equal to a naught. That means that character is not one of the characters that I want. And if that is the case, 
if the position of that of that character in the hex s hex um string if it's not there then that's a problem then i'm going to set my b flag to false and then it'll go to the second character it'll check if that character is there if it's not there it'll set it to false so it doesn't matter if one character of all of them it'll change to false at least once and as long as it changes to false once it'll never go back to true therefore we will know that there's been at least one issue with my hexadecimal code okay so there's how we check each and every individual one. you see this is a little bit more complicated to do inside an if statement and that's why i like the flagging technique where we can break it up into little bits so if i get to this point i've checked both criteria and i get to this point if i'm happy if at this point if my flag variable is still true if my flag variable is still true at this point then i know not s flag sorry b flag if b flag is still true at this point then i know that the code is valid so i can show message um, valid code or whatever they want me to display and if it's not true then obviously that's a problem then show message error in quotes okay so let's test to see if that works hopefully that works so running the code checking are we in no syntax errors hopefully and There we go. let's click on flagging so we've already going to give it a particular hex that's going to be legit it goes that's a valid code fantastic but if i change that even if i make it all legitimate characters those are all legitimate characters but it's the wrong length problem and if i make it the right length but i change one of those characters to a non hexadecimal code or character that's a problem too and if I change them to all the wrong characters, so let's change it to all characters that shouldn't be. That's a problem too. There we go. So there we go. It works. Fantastic. Now let's go look at the counting method. So in this example, there are three criteria. It must be above 50 for at least one of the two tests. It must be above 75 for an exam. For exam one and it must be above 60 for exam two and they say we need to at least two of the criteria need to pass okay so a whole bunch of criteria here so let's take criteria one so i'm going to first of all let's make our counting variable and we're going to initialize our counting variable to zero so no criteria have been met so far now criteria one you must get at least above 50 for one of the two tests so if our test one is above 50 above 50 not equal to so above 50 or our test two is above 50 then we're going to increase our account because we have found a valid criteria remember when using or you must put brackets around your criteria condition sorry there we go so that's our first criteria tick so if it meets that criteria we've got one of the criteria correct then we're going to say hey if the first exam our exam one must be above 75 if it's above 75 then increase my i count that's another criteria that we've met and then we say if my our exam two is above 60 then we can increase our count because that's another criteria that we met so we are just checking each criteria individually for when it's true we want to when it when it successfully passed the criteria each criteria then we increase the count so it's opposite to the flag flag we were looking for the opposite of when it passes but yeah we assuming known criteria are correct and as we meet the criteria we tick them off hey that one's done that one's done that one's done and then at the end here we can check it, we need to meet at least two of the above criteria so we can say hey if my R count is greater than two, then we've met two of the criteria. Then we can show a message and they say, we pass, right? So I'll say pass. And if not, show message fail. 
So they've already put in the values for us. So in this case, you can see that one of the tests is above 50. They've got above 75 for the first exam and below 60 for the second. So they've met two of the criteria, so they should pass. Ah, you see, it must be great at least two. Great then equal to two. Nearly made a mistake. There. That was a printed error there. Should be great then equal to two because if they get two, then at least that does meet our criteria. So if it's greater than equal to two, there we go. So they pass the test criteria, they pass criteria two, but they fail criteria three, but that's okay. They just need two of them. Let's see if that works. Counting. Yes, it's a pass. All right, if I go back to the program and let's say they got all three criteria correct. Then that's also a pass, obviously, because it's above three. And if they fail that criteria, or they pass the second criteria, let's pass the second criteria, but they fail the third criteria, they've got 55 over there, then it's still a pass. But if they pass the two exams, but they failed both the tests, that's okay, because they passed the two exams. Still a pass. But if they fail the two exams and they fail exam two, they got below 60 for exam two. So they failed the two exam, the two tests, they failed exam two. That's a problem because they've only met one of the criteria and that's why there's a fail there. Okay, so there's the flagging and the counting techniques for Delphi. That was the final video in our video series. For the other videos, as well as other videos relating to Delphi content, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, like us on Facebook and Twitter, tell us what you like about our videos so we can make more for you. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.